Welcome to Edmonds Election Watch 2015. I'm your host, Teresa Whipple. In the studio is Alvin Rutledge, who is running for Edmonds City Council Position 2. Al, welcome to the program. Thank you. First, I'd like you to talk about your background, how long you've lived in Edmonds, and uh, anything else you'd like to share, and why you're running for City Council. Uh, I've been in Edmonds since 1986, attended several uh, council meetings. I've been active in a lot of communities in the city and decided to run uh, for Edmonds City Council because there's a lot of issues that have to be solved. And uh, I believe that the, a lot of changes coming uh, within a year, year or two here. Uh, this is only a two-year term. And, and I believe on a two-year term, uh, a council person should uh, have enough time to uh, do what he has to do. And uh, my opponent uh, has been in for six months, whatever. And so this is why I went for this position, to help the community, to serve our community better. Okay. And what are the top three challenges for Edmonds in the next five years, in your opinion? Well, all the, the big challenges are is, is, is Ed, uh, uh, crossing uh, down in Dayton Street, where the commission was formed, is how to get traffic uh, through town here. Uh, Sunset Avenue right now, they say there's over a thousand cars a day, which is a car a minute. Uh, 450 to 500 people uh, walk through there every day, uh, walk way on the Sunset Avenue, and there's a limited parking problems right now. But what are you going to do with you get an increased uh, uh, population, they get increased traffic, increased people? This is one of the biggest things that has to be solved. Is what are you going to put? How are you going to solve your problem with the people there? With the people on the on Sunset Avenue, or and the getting uh, getting people across the are we talking uh, about the railroad crossings and getting people across? The railroad crossing is it's uh, it's another big issue coming up here because uh, they have a, a tax force for twelve to eighteen months. I support that uh, area, but the the crossing program uh, has been going on for several years. Uh, there have been different designs put out before on this. Um, I think the problem you have is is how to get the the the, the traffic through there uh, and be competitive. Uh, the senior center uh, has come to a couple of organizations I belong to, and they have mentioned that the uh, uh, coal trains and the uh, 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 trains coming through there has nothing to do with them. Uh, they're, they're more concerned of remodeling the senior center. So when that gets done, they'll take worry about that at that time because they're talking about two, three more hours wait time. So that's a big issue to work with, too. Right, yeah. The emergency vehicle access, I know, is a big concern for people. If anything ever happened on one side of the tracks and they couldn't get the vehicles across because of the trains. Well, they'll just put a station across one way. They'll just build a... Uh, uh, emergency center on, on both sides of the track and, and so they won't have any. And you'll be able to airlift the people right out of there to the hospital. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll have a helicopter and all that. I'm pretty sure that's in the plan in uh, 2030. Uh, you're going to see that here. They have all that done by then. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that has been talked about a lot is the fact that the city is um, you know, right now is running in the black in the budget, but over time we're going to be running in the red. And we have streets that haven't been repaired for quite some time. Um, what do you see as an answer to that problem of not having enough revenue um, for, to operate the government? Well, the city the second quarter was $18,000 over the budget. Mm -hmm. um, the city this is a, getting in their problem. What they voted was to uh, take the minutes on the uh, boards and these commissions, no more minutes, to save staff time, save money, and just make notes. I disagree with that 100%. I do not believe this, the, uh, uh, the present concept experience I've had. I've been secretary uh, in organizations. I've taken minutes before. I understand how much time it does as being a volunteer doing this. So when you do that, um, you, you, sa you save saving costs. For example, 
the Edmonds uh, uh, Library that we have. For instance, the library here, we have a library board. And the city uh, is looking at the possibility of eliminating the staff person coming to those meetings to save money for the city. Another issue that they're looking about doing Highway 99, you're talking about, oh, we got to develop a Highway 99. This is a big joke here because Highway 99, the city council, uh, I believe already voted on the issues I'm talking about, eliminate the task force. No more minutes. All they want you to do is have a meeting and just send brief, brief uh, minutes into what they're doing. Th these are things that the city is trying to do is eliminate these boards and commissions out, community organizations out. That's not the answer because the answer is you get community people like the library, for example. They bring in people to the city here. They spend money, and what you're trying to do is go vice versa. You're talking revenue. Revenue is you have to bring people into what you're doing. Highway 99, uh, they got car quests uh, uh, coming in here for Linwood, 500 cars. Uh, Sunday came on announcement to Ever Herald, Evergreen Way. There's 475 cars, uh, new cars that are going to be built up there. You realize that's 1,000 cars, and we're going around telling people that Highway 99 is our good car base. Well, that's revenue. So we got revenue moving into our area here. You got to be very careful on that. Mm -hmm. So in terms of finding new revenue sources, um, I'm hearing you say that one answer is not to cut things like boards and commission meeting notes um, and staff time. Um, that isn't a good answer to saving money. Um, and also that we should be focusing on Highway 99 revenue development um, and encouraging car dealerships to come into town? Well, that's right. The Highway 99 through uh, Peggy Hetzler Financial Director and Barbara Fay, I believe in 1995, uh, we have more money coming in up there than we did down here, but somehow the car dealers disappeared up there. And so this happened before years ago. And uh, you have to bring in new businesses, new things to bring in. Uh, People ask me, well, what can you bring in? I see it's constant. I mean, I'm a candidate there. Uh, I have several. I'll give you one. It's a small appliance shop. I used to be in the furniture and appliance business. And what you do there is you go and get 25 to 50 investors, put a small amount of money up, and open up a shop down here in Edmonds and volunteer their hours in. That's just one business that would go. You have other small items in there, too. You don't want to bring a business in here that you already have. You're competing against another business, and you have to look at these outside areas here. I just gave you one, but there's probably eight or nine other ones that I could probably end up doing, uh, bring in as a, a, uh, as a community ownership like you do, like Holds Grocery, like you do at Winkle. They're owned by the employees that work there, and this would be the same situation, uh, pretty well the same way to go on a business. Okay. Let's uh, turn to a few issues that have been uh, coming up before the council lately that I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, briefly mention Sunset Avenue Walkway, and that, of course, is something that has been discussed a lot, and they are now in the process of finishing the um, temporary uh, striping and the, the parking evaluation of all those things to see if they think something should be done differently. Do you have an opinion about what should be done on Sunset at this point? Um, Sunset Avenue, um, you can change the process, change proposal within a year. Uh, if I'm elected city council member here, I would uh, uh, talk to the residents there and we would do a change. Uh, there's a uh, give and take. There's a lot of issues there. Um, uh, I got in my brochure, uh, I, that's a residential area. Now what I'm talking about keeping Sunset Avenue as residential is you have the convention center just sold to the church. And what you don't want to do is put more commos in there, Go uh, try to get, go. Uh, you got a height limit here in different areas in town, and you don't want to get a big height limit there. And then all of a sudden, you're on the, you're on the uh, Sunset Avenue there, you can set all these commos coming up here. Uh, this is 215. Uh, you're out probably five to ten years here. 
And so uh, Sunset Avenue, uh, I can mention before, I got these figures from the city. Uh, they have 1,100 cars that go through there daily. That's one car a minute. I questioned uh, Ed there and gave him a call. Uh, Ed, Ed's the, uh, works underneath Phil Williams. And they have 350 to 500 people per day walk there. Like between 9 o'clock in the morning, you might have 35, 50. 12 o'clock, you got 40 or 50 in the evenings you do. And this will increase as, as you go on. You want to keep it residential area there. Uh, you, don't want, you don't want to change it any other way. So uh, uh, it, you have uh, uh, bicycles that go southward. Cyclists take bikes, they come through there. Uh, I understand they almost hit somebody, a, per, a person walking down the street. You got cars that have trouble backing in and out. Uh, you have to make a change of this. Leave it like it is now. And you have to do is come back within a year with a big change there with the residents in that area and, and have a monthly meeting all the way up to that and then come back and, and change the whole system. If that's what the, the people that live in the area, the people that live in that area should be their number one choice. They're owners of property, they've been there a long time, and they have the right to decide what should be there. And that's my opinion, and I would work with those people there on that. Okay. Another issue that has gotten a lot of attention recently has been the installation of the new play fields up at the old Woodway High School um, and the, uh, the crumb rubber tire infill that they're putting up there. And um, of course the school district um, received some comments from parents and community members that they were worried about the safety issues associated with the, the tire, the recycled tires. Um, and the city heard some um, uh, appeals to um, you know make some changes and um, have, do, have you had a chance to look at that issue and do you have any opinions about what maybe should have been done differently um, or is that a, anything that concerns you at all? Well I've been I went to six meetings I mentioned city council meeting um, The, I went to the meeting at the Edmonds School District where they had to call the uh, security person in and I gave them my information that I had from the city. Uh, apparently the board did not have that information and they still went ahead and, and voted on this. And uh, my problem with the school district was I wanted more information. I went to the last meeting. They sent me a packet of information. Uh, the city gives me information. Uh, I have information on, on which way to go on this process. I get people asking me all the time which way that I think we should go on this. But I'm the only person, the only candidate, the only person I believe in this uh, uh, running for office or in office city has been at Edmonds School District meetings. I've been there 14 years. I've gone to several meetings all the time. I understand the athletic fields. Uh, they had three other areas, areas before that they applied for that I went to on the hearings of, and I'm the only one involved here. And, and I, the only thing I dis, uh, disagree is that the school district uh, should have waited until the appeal process is done that they had uh, 14 days or 20 days from the appeal. And uh, that came back, and they already started the started the program. And uh, the only thing about this whole thing right now is, uh, you have one school board person running, and whether or not they're going to build this on other other fields, I do not know. My problem is on this whole situation right now. There's no agreement between the city of Edmonds and the school district had a five-year lease was up on the 31st of August. That has not been, that has not been signed yet. And uh, my, my big problem with this is you got kids here, you got families, you have houses for sale. I'm on Ballinger, we had seven down the street on, on 76. I got one, I think two left. 
Seward Park out here is building 26 houses, and I think they got eight or nine left. You're getting people that are looking about moving in here and buying property, maybe bringing youngsters with them. And then they say, well, where are my kids going to play at? And you got this rubber problem, this and that. And actually, it hurts the school district for enrollment of their funding that they get for enrollment, and also it hurts the city of Edmonds here. So we're the losers of this whole thing. We're losing, you're talking revenue increase. We're losing tax money on this. The problem is that kids got to play somewhere. And uh, if I was on the console, it would never happen. The whole solution is, the problem is, had a five-year contract without a meeting. When you have an agreement, you should meet at least twice a year. That's the problem. I go monthly to their meetings. There ain't no excuses why the city of Edmonds and the school district did not have two meetings a year. That's 10 meetings in five years on their agreement. You, this thing would never happen. One of the things that I've heard people talk about in recent um, months has been citizen participation at council meetings, lack of transparency in government, um, too many executive sessions, people don't know what's really going on. You've been around a long time and you've gone to a lot of city council meetings. What is your opinion about those kinds of concerns that people have? What could the city do differently, or do you think they even should need to do anything differently? Well, um, I'll just stick on the head of the city council meetings. I want to get on these other meetings or different cities yeah. around because they're all different. Uh, if I'm elected, if a person comes up and speaks, no matter who, I'm going to ask for their name, phone number, whatever, and go on and talk to them. Uh, I'm shooting for a two-year term here, and right now they don't do that. Less than one, less than ten percent of the time people speak, they just sit there and don't do anything. But the problem we have here is that they're volunteers. Really, the amount of salary that you pay these people to be a council member for a week is not there. Uh, they have another job they do. They come home at night, hit the council meeting. And if you look at it that way, you can see why they don't want to have, have other times to go out and talk to people. That's the problem. I would, uh, uh, that's my main problem would be on, on the council meetings, make sure, because these citizens come, sometimes they come out of work, they're taxpayers, and they should be heard. No matter what the issue is, they got to be heard and get their point across. And you have to come out and support these people. And... That's my opinion, and uh, I'm completely against 100% uh, 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 against uh, uh, these council members not asking questions for people when they come to the meetings. Okay. So there should be more back and forth uh, ability to be able to have a, a dialogue with citizens when they come in and make comments? Well, uh, sometimes you don't have anybody. Sometimes you have one, two, or three. Uh, you should uh, be, able, be able to talk to them, uh, go out and talk to them all, bring them back again to see what their input is. And uh, they're talking about dropping these boards of commissions, but I'm, I'm going the other way. I believe that you have a meeting with these people, you get them to be a volunteer in other organizations in the town, and they can go with you and get them involved in the city. And uh, the volunteers today are getting harder and harder to get because the families have too many things to do in the day. It's not like it was years ago. And so uh, that's what I believe in. Okay. Well, now we have an opportunity for you to directly address the voters um, and tell them why they should vote for you. So I'll let you look into the camera there and do that. Yeah, my Alvin Rutledge, um, a resident since 86. Uh, I'm for the community, for the taxpayers in the city. Uh, we had a lot of other items that we did not mention today. Uh, it should be considered the vote. Uh, come on and vote, and uh, I need your support, and go from there. Thank you. Al, thank you so much for coming in, and I wish you the best of luck on your campaign.